AI is everywhere, especially in places that you may not even realize. Take Canva, for example. There's tons of ways that students and teachers alike can use AI right within the platform. So let's check them out and I'll show you how they all work. Let's start off looking at Magic Media. Head over to your apps and then search for Magic Media. Once you click it, you'll be asked to enter a prompt. So for this example, let's do something like a dark and spooky forest. Now you can also change the styles if you want like a watercolor type picture or maybe like an actual photo. I'm just gonna leave it blank though. You can also change the aspect ratio, which I really like. So for this particular example, we're gonna do portrait because we're trying to make a book cover. So let's go ahead and click generate image. So there you can see it's created some pretty cool pictures. Let's go ahead and pick this one. And all I need to do to enter this into my background is I can actually resize it using these dots, or if I want, I can just click the three dots and say set to background. Now the next thing I wanna do is go over to text and I'm just gonna add a title. Let's call this, we'll say the Wanderer's Path. And then I can change that text to whatever I like. Let's just go with something like that. Sure, and then I can even duplicate that text layer if I wanna make sure I keep that same font to a, for a subtitle. Maybe I wanna say Forest of Mystery. And then maybe I wanna shrink that down just a little bit so that way it looks like an actual title. So that's how you create a book cover with using Magic Media. Next up, let's take a look at Dolly. Head over to your apps and then search for Dolly. Launch the app and then you'll be asked to enter in a prompt. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, a teddy bear riding a skateboard in the city. This goes along with the book Cordroy that we're reading in class. So here you can see it's generated some images. I like this one. And so I can have the kids explain how would this image represent their character Cordroy in the story. Next up, let's talk about Image Upscaler. Go to your apps and type in Image Upscaler. Open the app, and then you can select a photo that you would like to increase the resolution of. So here I have a photo of Amelia Earhart that I wanna make sure that the resolution is increased. You can see it's kind of blurry. So I'm gonna go ahead and select four times and let's upscale it. One of the things I like about Image Upscaler is it gives you this preview so you can see ahead of time how it looks. Once you've decided that it looks good, go ahead and hit replace. Image Upscaler has now replaced the resolution with an improved version of that photo. This is really neat for the kids to use when working with historical figures. Maybe they wanna take some older photos and they wanna rejuvenate the pixelation in those to make them look more modern. Next, Next up, let's take a look at Magic Morph. Head over to your apps, and this time we're gonna search for Magic Morph. Open up the app. You can see this is asking to select an element in my design that I want to morph. So I'm going to select Science Fair, and I really would like that to look like those balloons that you find in the stores for birthday parties. So I'm going to select Magic Morph, and let's see what it does. So as you can see, it's generated some images that I can use. If I select this, it doesn't actually uh, take away the original element. It just replaces it with a example that they can use but it did do a pretty good job of making that look like those balloons. So this is just really fun for the kids to use to try to make their elements stand out. Next up, we have Murph.ai. Let's head over to the apps again. Let's search for Murph.ai. Now, one thing to note about Murph AI is once you click on it, it will ask you to make sure you log in with your account. So if you don't have an account, you'll need to do so. It is a free plan though, so you don't need to worry about having to pay for anything. Now that I have my account open, I can pick and choose uh, my person that I would like to use as a voice. I'm just gonna keep it simple here, pick Miles. For my text, I'm gonna enter in a quick paragraph about uh, what this project is, what it all is. You can change the conversation style. So we'll go ahead and we'll make this uh, let's say like a newscast because it's kind of like a project. The speed and pitch, we'll leave that there. And then we can generate it and we can listen to see how it sounds. Welcome to our plant science research, a collaborative project that shares insights and innovations. Now let's go ahead and add that to design. And when you click duration, now you'll be able to have that read Welcome aloud. Welcome to our plant science research, a collaborative project that shares insights and innovations. You'll see that too that there's only nine minutes of voice generation time left. That is because I'm still on that free plan. So just know that ahead of time going into it. 
Next, let's talk about translate text. I already have my project open that I use for Murph AI, but what if I have someone who maybe wants this in Spanish? All I need to do for this is I need to right click on that particular text area and then say translate text. From here, I can pick whichever language I would like to translate it to. So let's just say Spanish. And then I can go ahead and decide which of uh, the text I would like to translate and then just select that translate box. And as you can see, Canvas automatically translated just that one box that I selected. Now, if I wanted to do them all, I would have been able to select them all right over here on the left side, and it would have actually translated the entire slide for me. One other thing I had to notice is that it duplicates the slide. So you still have your English translation, but it adds the Spanish side as well on a different slide. Next, let's talk about Colorfy. Head over to the apps, search for Colorfy. Colorfy takes old photos that are black and white and adds color to them. You can actually go ahead and select this image and you can replace it or you can upload it. But for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and Colorfy this particular image of Martin Luther King Jr. and let's see what it does. So you can see that it's added some color to that image, which really is pretty neat for the kids because when they have those old black and white photos, it kind of gives them an idea of what it looked like to really be there in that time and in that moment. Next up, we have the app Secret Ink. Remember those book covers that we made? Yeah, these with the magic media? We're gonna use this actually as inspiration when using Secret Ink. Secret Ink is an app that hides text in plain sight. So let's search for Secret Ink by clicking on apps. And then we're gonna launch the app. What you need to do is you need to explain to Secret Ink what the message is. So we're gonna say spooky. And then we need to describe the background. So a dark, rainy, forest and let's see what it can generate. What we love about Secret Ink is that sometimes the text is a little bit more obvious uh, than other times. So if you shrink it down, maybe it's not quite as obvious. If you enlarge it, then it is. This is a really fun way to tie in those book covers that maybe they had worked on. Maybe it's for a writing project where they wanted to describe the theme of the book. Either way, this is a really engaging activity for the kids to use. Be sure to follow us for more tips and tricks.